Good afternoon, my name is TF2 Public Ferret, and this is Podcast 3. My guests today are Shaggy, Convibune, and Bordy Dog. Say hello, fellas. Hi. Hello. hello. And, you know, you know today we've got six questions for today. You know, everybody's been studying up a little bit. Uh, we got in uh, Bordy Dog last, you know, last minute notice. We were very thankful to turn up. Anyway. Okay, so let's start with our first question, which is from Epic Killer, which is what is your opinion about the recent demo man nerf slash buffs? Yeah, I think one important thing to notice about demo man is, is that um a lot of people from my experience when I first played uh would just spam stickies uh and you know rely on the sticky bomb launcher. To, it's like for everything, you know, to destroy sentries, to do a lot of damage, because you could rack up damage quite quickly if you spam it. But I think the recent changes have like encouraged people to use other things as well. You know, like the grenade launcher. Once you learn how to use that, it, you know, you, you you get a lot better with the with the with the demo. You know, you realize that sticky bomb launcher isn't the only way to go, and that grenade launcher can actually help in so many situations. Like yeah. I personally feel. The grenade launcher is actually better at destroying sentry nests if you know how to aim. So I feel like the updates and the changes have just encouraged people to go, hey, let's just not use the sticky bomb launcher. You've got other utilities to use. Try and use them, experiment with them, and you'll be a better demo for it. I think. Well, actually, the thing I used to find was the uh, an ideal sentry buster back in the day was the uh, two shot lock and load. I mean, two shots with that would take anything down. Now it's three shot, not so good, but it's got a bit more of a backup plan to it. And I've seen tons more players use it nowadays. The mysterious third pill as well. You yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> two barrels, three pills. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, actually, one of the other things about the recent Demo Man nerf buff thing, I, I like to call it the you know, realignment update. What they've done is they've kind of tweaked it a bit, and from the looks of it, they've slightly nerfed the stickies, mm. and they've slightly n buffed the positives. Um, Shaggy, you're the uh, Demo Man. Uh, so w what did you find? How, how has the uh, update tweaks really affected the game? Um, well, the Sticky Launcher is a strange beast, in my opinion. Like, they first, ages ago, they nerfed it, so it had, like, a ramp-up damage. When you first launched it, it did, like, 20 or 30 damage. And then, the longer they stayed, like, alive or not detonated, they would ramp up damage. And I think that was a too severe nerf. Like, you couldn't really do a whole lot with that. And then they buffed it again, which to its normal state and then they nerfed it a little bit more to what it is now and I think now it's good so the air deton uh, the explosion radius when you detonate midair is decreased signif significantly and I think it's good now yeah I think that's one of the things that's been leaning towards people using the primal weapon a lot more uh, simply because you can't use the sticky bomb launcher like a primal weapon like you see, you see like air shots coming in all the time and now not so much lock and load has Rechange that a bit. Um, the other thing I like to think is well, they've actually um, slightly nerfed the tide turner, and interestingly, they've made the clade more and the Scotsman skull cutter a bit more relevant now. I yeah. mean, I'm now seeing a lot more skull cutters running around. Yeah. I think another That's thing really also good. is that it's also encouraged. I think the cladimore is also one that can also be used because that if you if you do miss that 100% charge gain, you can just put on the cladimore with the tide turner. And you'll in, you'll get that 100% charge back. So you know it's still there, but you just you're gonna lose a bit of health mm. for putting on this certain sword. So I think it's fine, personally. Uh, you got any opinions, Baldy Dog? Um, well, when uh, the what's it called, the Love and War update just came out, everyone played demonized with the Tide Turner. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I personally went ham because I like that weapon too much. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, actually, I you say about down. so you say about uh, you body you saying about uh, every went the uh, tide turner. I think one of the other things that every also went because it was a op combo was half Zatoichi. Oh my god! Because it oh, was no. such an insane. It was basically not, not only do you get your charge back, but you also heal. So you could pretty much just go in, like do suicidal runs and get at least one person. And you could just charge back out again, and you'd just be at full health, so you wouldn't have punished yourself in any way. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was a do or die uh, situation, and it, sometimes it really paid off. 
Uh, I think that's one of the, I think the big, nice big change about that update was. Uh, it really, really stopped the tide turn and getting a little bit out of control because, you know, yeah. the thing is, it was one of those weapons I thought was borderline OP. Yeah. It, it kind of had the capacity to ruin games a bit much, but it wasn't quite there. And what they've done, they've, they've kind of nerfed it significantly that it's not like a premier weapon and that you really have to kick yourself out properly to make it work. But, you know, it's still powerful enough that it's actually a respectable weapon. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think seventy-five percent charge gain on kill is fine. Like, because it, it, you, you you'll still ch that twenty-five percent will come back to you pretty shortly. But it stops you from charging in, charging back out, or chain charging, as like some people did, where you just literally. <laughs> oh went, it's God. like it's like a it's like a pinball game. You literally went from one person to another, and it just became ridiculous. <laughs> Have to say though, I mean the thing, that, and now the new thing where basically if you take damage, your charge goes down. I mean Natasha just ruinates those guys now. Oh, my oh God. you're charging oh. slower. Uh, oh yeah, wait, you lost your charge and you're stuck in front of me. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you, <laughs> man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, anything else about the uh, demo man recently? I'm trying to think of anything else. Mm. I don't think that, I think the only things they really did change was the tide turner and also the sticky bomb launcher. So A really. Loud. Yeah, oh, also the lock and load as well, yeah. yeah. yeah so I feel like all it's done is really just made people realise that there's more to demo than just spamming stickies and, you know, just trying to rack up damage in that sense. You could rack up damage in other ways and play it in so many ways. Because out of most of the classes, I feel demo's got the most versatile items. Cause yeah. yeah, I'll give you that. Um, the other thing, actually, we've I've kind of completely forgotten the two new weapons: the quickie bomb launcher oh my God. and oh the God. iron, the iron bomber. It's I mean, terrible. the quickie bomb launcher so far, I've heard, had a very bad rap. Nobody really likes it. Yeah, I feel like it's trying to. It, I think the, the reason why they brought that it was like, hey guys, I know you're kind of upset that you can't spam sticky. So how about this weapon? It's great, right? You can spam stickies again, and everyone's just like, yeah, but it's not the same. It's a bit, it's a bit different. Yeah. And I think the other weapon. Um, uh, what's the name of the other the one? The Iron Bomber. Iron Bomber. Yeah, the Iron Bomber. Yeah. People, I think, I heard someone say it's like a lock and load and the um, the loose cannon combined into one. And I can see where they're coming from very vaguely. And I wasn't too disappointed in that one. I thought, okay, this one's all right. It's another grenade launcher. Uh, but compared to the Quickie Bomb launcher, I think the Quickie Bomb launcher was a bit of a letdown. It just yeah. didn't. It, it was trying to bring back the sticky spamming, but it didn't really work. Well, I think the key thing with the Iron Bomber, though, is it's a bit of a... Now, if you know your older games, uh, take, for example, uh, original Quake 1 and the grenade launcher in that. Everybody knew how to bounce grenades. Uh, so this gives you a different style of gameplay. You don't bounce the grenades, they actually just hit a wall and can fall down. That gives you a few gameplay options, uh, ways to get around things, because I always say the arcing motion of these weapons. You can fire them over a target, the nice thing with that is they won't bounce backwards, it will just hug a wall and fall down. Kind of like the Dam Busters raid thing, you know. It will actually just go down the wall and you can hit somebody right at the bottom of that wall instead of it firing and bouncing back. Mm. But anyway I though, I think we've um, hit uh, the bottom of the barrel there in terms of the uh, Demo Man question. Now let's uh, scroll down to our next question. And it's from Captain Unicorn, and it is a... Uh, what is your review of the Steel League? Um, I think I think all you guys were, did participate, didn't you? Oh no, yeah. I, I I didn't I didn't get the chance because um, I think the day that uh, Artemis's team was supposed to be playing, I had something planned at university, so I couldn't join in and like oh. I, I wanted I wanted to, but at the same time I already had this thing planned with other people, so it was kind of a which one do I do kind of deal. So, and the only reason why it made it really difficult is because she said, oh, but you are like our heavy. You're like, we, we need you. And I was like, I know, but I have these things planned. So all I did was watch. But from what I saw, I thought it was quite interesting because normally in the games we play on Wednesdays and Fridays, we get into random teams. And usually sometimes what will happen is, is certain people will team up quite well with other people. I think the best example I can give is probably on Granary where we had me, Rob, and I'm confused on the same team at one point. <laughs> and it was literally oh. these two fat guys running amok <laughs> of the whole game. And this medic just going, oh, these guys are doing damage. I'm going to make them do more damage, and I'm going to make them just not die. So I think with Steel League, you get people going into specific teams, and now you get to see these really cool dynamic and combos. Yeah. Like I think one thing, I think it was... 
Artemis and maybe you, Shaggy, at one point, where like you two were like teamed up and like she'd pop crits on you and like you you would just destroy everybody. Like that 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 that, that combo dynamic that you see. Well, no, it wasn't Shaggy, no, because Shaggy was leader is leader of the. Um, oh no, it's Slappy, just, um, Slappy, that's it, Slappy. Yeah, I, I get slappy. too confused. They're very similar. Yeah. Very similar. <laughs> um, what was your experience, Baldy Dog? Is it, is it body dog or is it dog? I, I can, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. You can pronounce it the way you like. But ah. um, well, I was in a team with uh, Shaggy Tenacious N, <laughs> and it was uh, the first time I like joined the Mumble or the Team Speak or whatever. I was probably more nervous than I'm now. So <laughs> that's fair, man. Yeah, but it was like really fun, and yeah, yeah. hopefully there will be another one of these. Yeah, maybe in Hydro. Let's do Hydro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Pipeline. Well, Pipeline, oh god, why? <laughs> um, the thing is, uh, I, you know, I'm going to be quick with my own thing. I think the thing I... bad, The worst thing about the whole thing was I said in December, which was a bad move. Um... So many bad timing conflicts oh, arose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was the problem was that we we got the server on, in September. I mean, uh, Alarm got to bought it, and so I thought, okay, we can organise something. And I gave it like a month for everybody to prepare. And thankfully, we got eight teams just in the nick of time. Um, so that was part of the problem. The other thing was as well. I think was uh, the mumble situation. I mean, thankfully, Shaq, you mentioned you got, you got a mumble up and running. Yeah. Uh, a few teams didn't get that, and they were trying to use team chat and thingy, which I use for broadcasting. Now there was a debate where raging, where basically I could have not broadcasted, and then you guys just me watch it, watch it later. Or, but then there was the other side of it, where basically you do guys come to hear me talk and do stuff and say things while you're playing so it was a very tricky one to do so I think next time I do this kind of thing uh, I've got to really try and get the mumble or Skype thing hitting home to people about how mm -hmm. you know they should be doing that yeah. before the match starts also what I really liked was like the d dynamic of making a team like I just put up an announcement in the group and a bunch of people are like oh hey Shaggy I want to join your team and shit and yeah. that was like really fun and I got I got to know those people and we got into mumble and shit and like we talked and became friends and with a few of those people I'm still like playing lobbies daily now and I'm in like in an actual sexist team and Highlander team with some of those people nice. and it was really fun yeah yeah I feel like and that's like I said earlier like the, when you when you actually start getting into teams you actually find these combinations of like players that work quite well to each other because I think that's one thing that excites me whenever I watch TF2 games is like the team dynamic between two people like if you get a good medic heavy combo or a good heavy like uh, and pyro like defending him kind of combo it can really change the, the tide of the game so I feel like the the combination of players made it more interesting um, and I can kind of uh, relate to the same thing with Shaggy even though I kind of quit the team that I was going to be playing with I befriended a few people and we were going to become like a Highlander team and I was going to be the heavy uh, and we played one game and um, I had to call out things and stuff like that and I was really nervous it was really stressful because <laughs> I'd never done it before but apparently I did quite well like we, we managed to win two games we won our lakeside game and I think Gold Rush and yeah it was fun but I just kind of want to stick to just playing pub and also uh, playing on Ferret server and all that kind of stuff and just, Yay. you know. Um, the thing is, with that, I think one of the big things to come out of it was, I think I think the community really came together in their own separate ways. Uh, and I think still, actually, we, we still see a few clan tag, or n team tags here and there. The WC <laughs> guys are still hanging out together. Um, and that's a nice thing uh, for me. I mean, part one of the things we, we in Lark quickly uh, realised was is that these guys will hopefully stick together enough so that when the next tourney comes... They just uh, instantly we're gonna have, group up together, you know? Yeah, like, we're going to have some rapidly oh. mobilised teams. I mean, unfortunately, I think we're going to have a couple of teams that are basically going to disintegrate. Mm. Uh, so we do need some new recruits back. I think, yeah. we, I think I managed to garner quite a few of them over the course of the last few months. So when it comes... Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get eight teams. Hopefully not more than that. Then I may have to start consider sixteen teams, which is oh god, that's going to be <laughs> a, it's gonna be a very, very big thing to to work yeah. towards. Um, I also think the uh, steel steel is basically more of a biased uh, thing to do because I really steel is my favourite map, as you know, 
I think it was very underappreciated how good a map yeah. it is. I, mean, I, I agree with that, I think, because a lot of people just look at Steel and go, oh, it's a confusing map, oh, it's it's like, oh, it's weird and stuff. But the thing is, is that the final battle between, like, uh, point D and E, there are so many ways to attack that point yeah. that it makes the whole dynamic really interesting. I mean, it's not, it is a bit more, it, I kind of feel like it's like the last point of Mountain Lab. Oh jeez! Also, and that yeah, that game yesterday was absurd. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I ne never before had I changed to so many classes in one game. But that point and steel have this dynamic where you can come in from so many different angles and different sides and different ways of trying to attack the point. So yeah, I do agree with Ferret in saying that steel is kind of underappreciated and it should yeah. be. People should play it more. It's a it's a good map. Yeah. I mean. The nutty thing about the steel map is it's, it's, it's raised as the most confusing map of TF2, or well, that maybe Hydro, and then you have the whole thing with Snowplow, which is like, what, really? Snowplow's yeah. confusing? I don't understand no. the, the, the statement there when they said Snowplow was confusing. I was like, really? I, I saw a gameplay video of it, it just looked very straightforward. Yeah. It's pretty much CP, isn't it? Like capture points? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It's CP, but... but it's kind of got like a mixture of payload in it, because you have to obviously push the train. Um, and the way you push it is by capturing control points. So I didn't see the confusion in that at all. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing with the Steel League was um, I think it was a very favourable to uh, defenders, especially Devonmen, that map. Um, there oh, were yeah. a lot of defence victories. It might have been the best map for that, and maybe having no restrictions on. But then I am a strict supporter of uh, pub mentality. <laughs> so I have a, so you know, having no weapon, no class and weapon restriction, I think made for a really interesting game, rather than having these very... Because the thing I find with comp, comp games is that you get very, very meta tactics, things come up. I actually find them kind of boring to watch. They become very formulaic. Whereas in a pub game, because anything can freaking well happen, I mean, I mean, I remember that game where basically um, Shaggy nearly pushed middle, so very nearly got a middle steal, oh, and yeah, then yeah. as soon as that didn't fall through, you bum rushed C and yeah. took it. I was like, oh my god, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was amazing. Like, in the mumble, we were like, oh shit, they're all attacking E, now they're all distracted, let's go cap B. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that that had so many moments, and that's kind of why I wanted to keep you know the pub mentality off of Steel. Yeah. Uh, but maybe it wasn't the best map to pick, but you know I think it was actually a really fun map overall, yeah. and everybody had a lot of fun. I think the other, I think the elephant in the room though has to be the inclusion of Hearts of Steel. Now oh. they came on a bit late into the game, uh, into the tournament, and uh, you know Froggy, you know I'm good friends with him. Basically said, yeah, can we bring a team in? And he said, we're like Division 6. Or 5, I can't remember. Um, now, at the time, I was on the 8th team, and I said, yes. It's been a controversial decision ever since, because people said that they were overpowered and they were going to win everything. And, to be fair, they won the tournament. But then when I look at them, I kind of saw... A very well coordinated team, not necessarily the best players. Um, so this is the thing. I mean, yes, maybe inviting a, a uh, competitive team in was perhaps a mistake, but I don't think they were overpowered. Um, what are your feelings, guys? Mm. Well, I can't remember like the results of the last match. It was um, Wiley Coyote. Or wait, Hearts of Steel versus who? The last match? I think it was Wally Cody, yeah. Yeah, Wally yeah. Cody. Like, did they get obliterated? I can't remember what the what the scores were. Like, I was it. Close, I don't think they were or? obliterated strictly. I mean, Wally Cody, I think at least got one win under their belt. Oh yeah, um, exactly. Uh, but yeah, it won a straight three 0 victory. But they did pretty well, Wally Cody. I mean, they 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 were seriously underdogging it because nobody expected yeah. to get where they were supposed to get to. Yeah, we were kind of surprised as well, actually, that they beat us. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, though. Captain Unicorn and um, Scoot Loops, I mean, some of the best medics around. They're a very good, very good team, actually. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was a surprise to see them go through. But I feel as if maybe Hearts of Steel was a bit of a controversial decision. But I don't really regret it too much, because otherwise we'd have had a buy slot in... Which I think would have felt cheated. I think people would have been more pissed off that one team jumped the queue because of a buy, rather than having another team in there. Mm. Yeah, I can see. I can see that. Um, I think 
one, yeah, like like you mentioned, like they're not the team wasn't necessarily like all amazing. They were just well coordinated, and I think that's the thing because they're playing to each other's strengths and weaknesses, which is why they seem overpowered because they can obviously make up for all their flaws and uh, and push their strengths further. But I think because they were in there. I think a lot of people for the next one we do are going to be like, okay, how can we improve our teams? And, you know, or if they're going to make a new team, who do I want? Who do I know that's on on the games that I want to be in my team? Because I know they'd, they'd, be, they'd be quite good. Mm. Yeah. Um, and Baldy, man, I mean, I, I, the thing is, you've actually been in a lot of games. I think you've actually played against a few of them quite a lot. I mean, what's your opinion on those guys? I mean, like Froggy, I'm trying to think of Iriday and Zook, have you seen them play and do you have any opinion of them? Yeah, well that's the strange thing about it. Um, I like saw the like the names that were making part of Hearts of Steel and I barely recognized any of them. That's the weird thing about it. They mm. never really played in like the, the ferret pups in your server. No, I mean to be fair, they didn't play before. Froggy might have seen a couple of times actually. Yeah. But yeah since then, it. Frog Froggy's been on a couple of times, and I think a couple of the other ones have turned up every now and again. Uh, so it's, you know, they're not they're not strange anymore. I mean, some of them have, we haven't seen in a while, but most of them, you know, a couple of them, yeah, we've seen a few hit things of them. They do like contribute every now and again. So I don't think they they're, they're strange anymore, really. Uh, I think it was simply because of how sudden they turned up. It's because it took everybody by a bit by surprise. But to credit them, though, they played a very good game. Uh, they won. They won the tourney as is, and you know I'm going to take that away from them. Uh, they did a very good job of what they did. Um, so yeah, uh, I think overall I would like to think that Steel was actually qu reasonably a good success. Yeah. Uh, got the community together. It, I mean, the thing is actually the, the the takeaway from all that is one of the biggest questions I get nowadays is when's the next league? Um, mm. That yeah. happens all the time. There's speculation what it's going to be. And I have all the answers, but I ain't going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Aww. Secrets. <laughs> oh, God, you, you tease me. I'm, I'm, I, I want to know these things, but I can't. <laughs> okay, oh. it makes it even worse. I know what the next map is. Me and Alarm Club oh, arranged it. Oh, but please, be, please be Hydro. I, I know I don't like Hydro, but hydro. I, didn't get, I didn't get to play Steel, so I'd like to play a more obscure map. Hydro? What the fuck? <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think Outrun hey, Rebellion hydro's great map, guys. <laughs> what, can we, what map can we get that's more confusing than Steel? I know, Hydro. Let's <laughs> go on with that. <laughs> get the most chaotic maps. Oh. Anyway, okay, so I think we've uh, answered that question on what's the review of the Steel League. Uh, question number three now is from Slappy. And it is, uh, what is Valve counting down to with its updates? Uh, end of the line, uh, the Manpower Miner update, and Love and War. Um, I think it's in anticipation of the Spy vs. Engineer update. So, I mean, what do you guys think is going to be happening with that? Hopefully, hopefully the update will actually have a few changes to it. I mean, a lot of people have been doing some digging uh, into the files and into other places, and, like, they found, like, weapon animations for new weapons and new scripts and stuff so i feel like this change this update's going to be quite big uh mm. hope and because i think that the versus updates are always quite large anyway because the demo yeah. versus soldier update was quite big the spy versus sniper update was quite big so hopefully this one this one sounds like it's going to be quite big and hopefully it'll it, it hopefully it'll be like a love letter to everyone who was uh, disappointed with the you know end of the line because uh, that was quite a you know, it wasn't yeah. really. It didn't really feel like an update. It was going well, to be. If I could weigh in on that, personally, for me, end of the line, I never really saw it as an update. I mean, it's a lovely video. It's quite. It's, it's a nice, good video, and I think that's all it was supposed to be. Yeah. I think the problem is, it got taken a little bit out of context too much. I and think the, the, hype, the hype train, which is quite funny considering the end of the line has a lot of trains in it. <laughs> but the, the hype wow. train, the hype train was very, very uh, sort of blown out of proportion so you know like oh there's gonna be this really cool map where like you're on trains and like you have to defend the control points and stuff so everyone was really looking forward to that and then people got to play snowplow and they were like oh this is great this is gonna be great and then obviously the what happened was is that valve removed it and then went okay here you go have some ducks and everyone was kind of really yeah. disappointed with that it. was it eased the weirdest part of the, end we of the had, line we had the bread thing in love and war but it wasn't overplayed it was kind of funny it was like oh, okay bread now comes out of teleporters okay cool and there are a few bread related items but this one kind of 
It was like Valve went, okay, we've done bread, and that's funny. How can we top that? I know, ducks. Well, okay, just bring back the conversation a little bit more to the countdown side of the question. Uh, actually, you said something about love, uh, the uh, Spy vs. Uh, Soldier vs. Demoman update. And that leads me, actually, to a certain point. Now, do you remember what the uh, result of the uh, Soldier vs. Demoman update? The war update? The, the uh, uh, war update. Wasn't it like a versus thing? Right? Yeah. I think if you remember, they assigned the gunboats to the soldier because he won the war. Yeah. Which therefore leads me to believe that they might pull a similar thing again with the engineer and the spy. That there's a unique weapon which will go to one of the classes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then that leads me to believe, what is the overlapping features between mm. the engineer and the spy? Revolvers, maybe? Because, like, yeah, sure engineer is obviously a Texan, so... Yeah. Yeah, they could give him a revolver item of some kind, that maybe it, far it shoots faster than his shotguns and does a bit more damage. And then for the spy, it would just be another revolver, but what kind of revolver we're going to get, we don't know. Hmm, could be. That, that's actually, that actually a really good overlapping factor. I mean, mm. for me, the spy has actually been a little bit... I think it's a little bit of a weak, weak class at the moment. I don't know what it is. Um, they, they, they're never overly critical in the game. I mean, sometimes you get some legendary spies out there and they do a great job, but usually, most of the time, spies are a little bit ineffective. Um, and also, recently, ever since they uh, did the made the Dead Ringer, the amount of Dead Ringer noobs out there has been terrible. Oh God, uh, they just yeah. can't yeah. play Spy properly, and they yeah. just wander around, and it's like, oh, God, are you going to appear from nowhere again? I mean, I I've, I do play Spy a little bit as well, and I've, I've probably shown up as Spy on a few of the games here and there, and, like, because it's 32-man, it is a little bit scary to go in, because you're like, okay, I have 125 health, and all I have is a knife and a pistol. I'm not going to be able to do that much. But um, I prefer the stock uh, cloak, because whilst yeah. it does, it, you're not as aggressive with a dead ringer. But if you become really good and sneaky with it, then you're just as good, in my opinion. And also that other thing of just, there are a lot of people out there who just use the dead ringer and don't really know how to mm. use it. And there's a part of me that just goes, I don't really want to be associated with the rest of you, <laughs> you spies running around with your dead ringers. <laughs> the dead ringer clique. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is. Uh, you know, again, back to the update side of things. I think, again, uh, not so much now because I think Engineer, especially in the service, is having a bit of a renaissance now uh, because I've said before that it was a little bit underplayed and this, that was very last year. Now, though, Engineers are really, really being the king. I mean, we've had um, Scarvoxio join the server and seriously, he's been kicking ass as Engineer and it's raised the value of Engineers quite well. But I think overall, when you go into the pub servers as well, engineers just fall down really hard. It's amazing, because when I first started playing the game, engineers seemed overpowered as all hell, back in the day. Um, and now, they just seem to be, you can get around them so easy nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Like, so when I try to play Angie, I'm really bad at it. I don't know what it is, but I just can't play Angie, because yeah. there's always something happening, there's always somebody spamming your sentry, there's always like a spy somewhere around you, trying to backstab you and kill you, I just can't do it. It's just too the much. Problem, the problem I have whenever I play NG is that sometimes I feel like I'm the only engineer doing anything, because a lot of times on pub servers you'll get these engineers who build at the last point, or they oh. build further back, or they put the sentry in a really obvious place, and you're just like, why are you doing this? You're just admitting defeat at the beginning, and like, here I am trying to like, we have no other NGs are actually helping out. So I'll try and do something, and then like my teleport will be destroyed, or before I can even get the sentry to level two, it blows up because like there's there's just an onslaught, and it just feels quite, it just feels quite stressful to have engineers that don't really help the team. They just kind of sit back. It, it's kind of weird. I think part of the problem with engineer is um, they are incredibly team reliant because uh, engineers yeah. can be an absolute mother hubbard to deal with um, because. If a team plays well and knows how to counter attack, it's almost impossible to get him. Yeah, like yesterday uh, yesterday on a on a mountain lab that one of the first few attacks was ridiculous. Like there were there were just sentries everywhere. Like I, I didn't know what to do. Like I I switched from like spy and demo, I was medic at one point, like and nothing happened. Like we just couldn't get in. 
It was yeah. ridiculous. That's that's the power of engineers. Like you know, if they team up or their team's well oriented, you're not going to stop them. There's no way you can stop them. I mean, uh, but the other thing is though, engineers are so easy to roll over at times. It, it's and it's usually from a bad team. The problem with engineer is their fate is way too often determined by their team, and I think that's something they might want to actually you know uh, fix with the engineer up. That they might introduce a weapon or something else which gives them a little bit more independence from the team and allows them to do things. The problem is, we've seen them try before making the engineer more independent with the uh, mini sentries and stuff like that. And mm. that's great. It really works in granary style five cap maps and it works if you're blue. On red, you are still chained to your sentry. You can't really move and you still got to hope your team does something. So I'm thinking what they're going to try and do. I mean, actually, no, to be fair, they have one little countermeasure, which I know Shaggy loves, uh, which <laughs> is the short circuit. Um, wow. <laughs> the bane of all men and soldiers. Wow. Uh, I think this is why I'm glad I use bullets. Uh, 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 yeah, I think that's a side thing, actually. Uh, since, since they up, uh, uh, introduced that, Heavy's had a lot more playtime because it's the one thing you can't counter. De you know, Pyros can't deal with Heavies. Sentries can't deal with Heavies that are Ubered. It's, you know, really been a mass... I think the biggest benefit of the Short Circuit has been the Heavy out of all <laughs> this more than the Engineer. Yeah, thanks, Short Circuit. You just made my, 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 my job a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, you know, Val Volvo. Yeah, we're announcing. Uh, you know, the short circuit now stops flares and arrows. Fuck's sakes, Volvo! <laughs> <laughs> Update to short circuit. Bullets from minigun are now reflected. Oh, oh. that would be ridiculous. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, body. I mean, I think you play soldier a lot, don't you? I mean, uh, how do you find uh, taking on engineers? Um. Well, if you have to direct it, it's it's mm. not really a problem. Oh, yeah. Well, I use it directed because I'm ordered to, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, um, but that's the thing. So, you find with the, I mean, the direct hit, I've seen so many times. I mean, you get three shots with that and the sentry goes down, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, two, yeah two, two shots. It's, yeah. If you shoot it fast enough, like, the NG has, like, no time to react. Two shots and it's dead. Yeah, but, yeah, I think it's three, but unless it's, like... Is Wrangled, it? which is most of the time. Yeah, that's the thing I have been seeing, actually, is the Wrangler. Wrangler's actually been making a bit of a comeback lately. Usually, it was a very discarded weapon before, but uh, ever since with the um, oh, Rescue Ranger. Because that, I think that needs nerfing. Because I'm seeing that all the time now. Oh my god. Uh, Gunslinger, <coughs> uh, r Rescue Ranger combos of just keeping the sentry alive. Yeah. That with a short circuit. And I think this is part of the problem you see with the engineers. They're having to juggle all the weapons all the time, hoping they don't get stabbed shot in the face and stuff like that. So they might want to do something else with kind of the engineer in that regard. Uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I think that's where a lot of the difficulty is lying at the moment. Okay, so I mean, okay, so with the new engineer versus spy update, is there any other, anything else you guys can think of? Um... <coughs> A new sapper, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, maybe yes, because please. we've only got two, and like the default one is arguably better. I mean, there was a time where I liked using the red tape recorder, because it ain't mainly because you could just be a nuisance and just downgrade sentries, and they're still useless because they're sapped, but at the same time, you're lowering their level. So even if the engineer does save it, he's like, oh, it's a level one again. So I'd like to say, I'd like, I very rarely use this term weapons, but I think it's a very noob weapon. Um, yeah, I like seeing the CD steeple at that way as well. Actually, you know, I love using the piss off heavies, but um, yeah, it's one of those off, weapons you just go. I'm just going to be an ass. That that's the kind of weapon I think of it really. Yeah, it, it basically it's the asshole weapon. If you can't stab an engineer and then sap it, because usually most spies worth their sort can do that. It's like left click, Q, left click, done. Um, but if you can't do that, the red tape record is excellent because you can just basically attrition down an NG with time. But the main sapper is still good because it stacks with damage. Um, like heavies or down men and stuff like that. So that's where I think it's a bit, bit better than the other one. So a new sapper, I mean, I don't know what the hell it would do because it only does really one thing, the sapper. Yeah. And this is like a traitor sapper, which would be hilarious. I would love to see... What well, converts <laughs> the sentry into like an allied sentry for like the other team or something. That, that, oh, that wow. would be interesting. I mean, it would, it would have to take, I think, to make it fair, it would have to take a very long time to convert, but when it does, that would be insane. It would be hilarious to see I'm, that. I'm imagining it on a bad water, the, the little, like, kind of garage area where most engineers build, that covers quite most 
areas of the last point. So if you stab and sap a sentry and it converts, I think that would win a game. Like, it'd be crazy. Or another sapper idea is, is a little bit different in that it does much less damage than regular sappers and then maybe use the whack. But if you sap all the engineer's buildings, uh, both teleports, the dispenser and the sentry, they all destroy immediately if you mm -hmm. get all of them. Oh, that'd be a very high-risk reward. That'd yeah. Be, that'd be, I could imagine that being very satisfying as well if you managed to pull that off. Oh, maybe a triple. Um, <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, I think for the time being, I think I would like to see both those classes a little bit more strengthened. I mean, in certain ways. I think Spies need something else to go with. I mean, actually, you look at the Knife. The problem with Spies, I mean, as you were saying before about uh, Demo Man being a very class, Spy is one of the most heavily, heavily narrow classes to play. You don't really have a play star unless it's impossible sniper, which is a bit shit in my opinion. I hate play I hate ambassador players. <laughs> yeah. oh. So it'd be nice to see Spy play a little different like a combat spy ninja, more overly than a um sneaky one. It'd be, it'd be more interesting. I mean I mean one of the weapons they were kind of toying with back in one of the Halloween dates a while back were the Freddy Krueger gloves. Which what they would do is it has no backstab capability, but it's a melee capability straight out of cloak. So you attack, instantly come out of cloak and start hitting people. Hmm. I mean, that would be amazing just to scare the shit out of people right in their face. Like, that was right! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, that damn, man, that's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so I think I think Valve's came down to you know, the engineer update and all that. And I think they're going to try and strengthen the class a little, make them a little more diverse. But this nice segues into question four, actually, also from Slappy. And his question is, will speculative matchmaking, which is a part of the uh, update, be the downfall of TF2? Uh, personally, I'm thinking no. Uh, what are your uh, thoughts? This is a tough question, in my opinion. I mean... I think it's trying to solve the problem of Valve tier, personally. I mean, how many times have you gone into Valve tier and you just end up feeling horrible because basically your team is Club Penguin, they can't do anything, and then you can't believe like the shit in Neptune to some of the players. Yeah. I know it's a bit hard for me saying this, I'm a public you know, I'm a public guy. But god damn though. It's like seriously? Um, yeah, it's like the previously mentioned engineers who build at the last point. Like you get a lot of those in like the Valve tier, and you kind of sit there and you just think, like, why are you doing this? Like seriously, like it's just, it, it's so soul crushing. But you can't do anything about it because you try to tell them, look, can you please move up your sentry? And they'll go, no, I don't want to, or they'll be really rude about it. Nope. Um, so yeah, <laughs> nope, <laughs> son. <laughs> just um, but um, I feel like having a competitive matchmaking would I guess it's a, it's an alternative option for players who want a bit more kind of like you know f stronger game if, if if like the Valve servers and pub servers are not really doing it for them mm -hmm. I, I don't think it would be the downfall of TF2 because that's been a mm. big that's been a big like worry about a lot of people recently because obviously Overwatch is coming out soon uh, so people have kind of been comparing it to TF2. Yeah, bad uh, comparison, personally. Big, but. big, big YouTubers like Star and Germa, you know, they're getting a bit tired of TF2. They haven't really made any TF2 videos in a long time. So, unfortunately, a lot of people kind of follow them as, like, behemoths of TF2. So if they start disliking it, other people go, oh, okay, I'm just going to give up. Yeah, so, no, I think there's a lot of falsehoods in that. First off, uh, a little bit of a diversion. I think Overwatch does need to be talked about a little bit. And yeah. I think... The biggest misconception about Overwatch is that it needs to be compared to TF2. Yeah. Because actually... It's, it's nowhere more, near it. Like, no. no. It's more like League of Legends. Yeah. Actually, it's more like Smite in that way. Mm. Um, I think the only comparison I can give it is that both have character. Like, like all the heroes in uh, Overwatch and all the classes in TF2, they have character. They have unique attributes to them, which makes them feel very, you know, very, very wholesome. And that's the only comparison I can think of. Because other than that, they're very different games. Like, very, very different. Yeah, I mean, um, the thing I'm seeing here is uh, it plays a lot like LOL, uh, League of Legends. 
Uh, the if you notice the abilities, the abilities in Overwatch are very much you push a button, it does this. Whereas in TF2, you get a few of those, but it's more about how you play the game, like rocket jumping, um, quick quick changing into stabs, and things like that. Yeah. Things along those lines. So that's where I'm a uh, you know not so thinking with it. But anyway, back to you know, the question at hand. Speculative matchmaking, downfall of TF2. Um. Um. Well, can I say something about, like, there's a site right now, uh, TF2 Center, which is, they call it lobbies, and basically, people put up random lobbies, and then they just, like, wait for 18 people or 12 people to fill up, you know, Highlander 6s, and then they can see how many hours each player has, how many lobbies they've, pl they've played, and then it's all just, you know, not pub tier you know, higher skilled guys playing against against each other. Maybe in mumble, maybe in maybe no mumble. It depends. Mm. And it's just all you know. They get together and play. It's kind of like that. That's, that's nice and all. I think I you know. I have no problem for you with the comp scene at all. Um, but the problem is for me. Um, and I think other public players. I mean, there's a quite a few casual players actually really quite good out there. You know, they can give the comp guys a run for their money. Um, as as you know, with me and the back burner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the thing is, is that we we don't really care about that, and we just want to go in the game and have some fun. You know, literally yeah. just boot up TF2, run it, go into a server. I think one thing that's really important to note is that the community for TF2 is so it's one of the most to me it's one of the most friendliest, most interesting communities because it. It not only is the game quite big and it's got a comp scene and everything like that. You get those silly Gmod videos and all the like the memes that have been created to the point where like Spy Crab is like an official like thing that Valve has recognised. Yeah, it's now uh, a taunt now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and you get that like there is also like a little Spy Crab you can have on your shoulder and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, so I feel that like as long as that side stays alive, I don't think TF2 is going to be going anywhere anytime soon. I mean, yeah, it's been around for almost eight, seven years. It's quite strong, and that's something that not most games can hold as an like as an achievement because you know they tend to die out quite quickly. But I don't think TF2 is going to be going away for another few good years. It might diminish a little bit because it is getting quite old and people are starting to move on to other things. But I don't think it's going to be dying out for a very long time. Well, the thing is for me here with TF2 is that it doesn't really get older far as I'm concerned. I just play TF2. Yeah, it and doesn't feel I just old. It never feels old to me. It just feels like TF2. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, there are sometimes I don't want to buy a game simply because it just reminds me of another game. No game is quite like TF2. And even if there was, I don't really want to change because they actually update the game quite a lot. And I think speculative matchmaking, going back to the question... Um, I think it's going to really benefit. It might actually bring back a few people, actually. Because what it'll do now is it'll make the casual players who are quite good go into servers and be like, oh, wow, I've actually got a team I can play with. You know, and it makes it so that... Oh, because the other thing I have heard, and this, this is actually quite true, uh, I think the Americans do this a lot. I'm not sure if any American fans out there, please, you know, write in the comments to see if it's true. Because what I do find, one of my friends, um, uh, Fluffy Udders, you might he might remember as the first ever commentator back way back here a year and a half ago. Um, he had a few incidents where basically he was playing like a night and the Americans on with over a hundred ping in Luxembourg for some reason. They don't understand ping or geography at this rate, um, <laughs> and they kicked him off. They just bo they rage booted him because he was too good. And so I think speculative matchmaking that would fix that because he'd be picked up against players that are actually decent and he had a good time with. And he wouldn't have noobs kicking him off because he's just too much of a threat. Uh, noobs yeah. can then play against each other and then they can do what they want. And the reasonably good players can all play against each other and have a really fun time as well. I think it would fix a lot of problems. Mm. And actually make Valve tier a very much more ambiguous term rather than just generally being a bit naff. Um, also, there's also one thing they could do which I think would really, really spell doom out for all the uh, server groups out there. Let's put all talk on. Because if they did that, mm. that would really yeah. be a massive threat. Cause That's why, like, I don't know if people saw it yesterday, but with, like, I think, even though he got MVP, everyone was, like, trying to kick him before the game started. I think it was Yo Mama. Uh, and uh, he was obviously talking in an old chat, and everyone wanted to, like, mute him. So that's why I said. The mute button's my wife. <laughs> no, yeah, like, I that. Yeah. It has done so much good for me. Because whenever you're in a server, if, like, 
even if someone's not like if they're just being loud and obnoxious or the worst case scenario they're being offensive and loud you can just mute them as simple yeah. as that you uh, don't need to kick them just let them play their game let them do what they want to do just mute them and just focus on what you want to do uh Bordy, what's your experience of, of uh, matchmaking so what the you know, delve tier if you ever go into it um well i haven't played uh valve servers in a pretty long time because i just got really bored <laughs> and dis- disappointed mm. by the people that were playing like <laughs> there is like a, like a tradition that when you join a valve server there's at least like three people afk in spawn yeah that's 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 yeah. a standard thing four, four snipers two spies <laughs> A battle medic, you know. <laughs> you know, there's so much admin, it's practically a board meeting rather than any. <laughs> do, do any of you guys actually use a main weapon? Um, <laughs> that um. kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, that's the thing, because, you know, I've met a lot of you guys on uh, Skyle servers, and, you know, it's yeah. a really, really good yeah. place to be, actually. Um, mm. Well, recently they've made their AFK options a little bit tricky for me to do commentary work in, but, you know, it's still very good servers. And yeah. one of the things it does, it it kind of does make it so only because it noobs come in, uh, they quickly find they're at the depth and they go away, and other players had never fun time on them. Yeah, mm. I think another small thing that I kind of like as well, because recently Valve put like SV Pure on a uh, Valve servers, uh, is that like custom skins? Because I see that's a big part of the community as well, making custom skins and sound effects from the silly to the really cool. And I, I like, I liked some of the skins and stuff I had. But then I went onto a Val server like a few months ago, and I was like, "Where are my skins? Like they're all buggied out and they're all broken." And I found out that Valve decided to put SV Pure on the servers, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm going back to Skyle then, because at least they actually understand, you know, that like." That side of the community is quite cool as well, and it's nice to have customization. Yeah. Well, I think maybe with Valve, maybe some sort of anti cheat mechanism or something like that. Maybe skins or something. Maybe they have a problem with that. Um, I do trust Valve most of the time to make the right decision on things. Uh, I don't think they make uncalculable, randomized ones. Um, so I think they have a good reason for that. Although the Snowplow one is still one of those weird decisions that I'll never get. Um, yeah. It's too anyway. confusing. It's too confusing, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I think, okay, we, we're done with our competitive scene question. I think we should go to our next one, which is from uh, Kerouac slash Johnny Memes, which is, what is the most overpowered weapon? <laughs> now oh, that um, short this circuit, is going to be uh-huh. lovely. Short no. circuit straight out of the gate. <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I think most people will either pick the mini sentry or the phlogistonator because those two are quite, like... They are like the obvious overpowered ones, but I'm gonna throw a curveball and I'm gonna say the vaccinator. Oh, really? Uh, because probably. I feel that once you are able to use that weapon properly, you just will never, 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 never die. And I, the example I can use is on Gold Rush, where I think someone put crits on me, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go in. I'm just going to destroy everybody. And there was this one medic on blue <laughs> that was swapping between the resistances and charging so much that the crits did nothing. <laughs> and if, if, you, if, you wow. can stop, if you can stop crits and any damage and go, oh, okay, you're going to hit me with that damage, I'll just heal. That's fine. My partner and me are fine. I think that's a pretty strong weapon once you know how to use it. So, yeah, yeah. I'd say the vaccinator mm. is pretty overpowered. Uh, Bordy, uh, man, what was your suggestion? Death Ringer. Dead Ringer. Oh, wow. Now they even nerfed that since. I mean, I remember the original Dead Ringer. Jesus, that needed nerfing so badly because it was the worst incarnation of Noob Spy, which was basically, oh, I'm on fire. I don't care. I'd run back to spawn. Yeah. And, like, I was pyro and I was getting pissed off with these guys because I literally burn, 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 <laughs> goddammit, die. Um. But also dead. paired up with a spicicle, that's the worst thing. Oh, spicicle those guys, oh, they're, the, they're assholes. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just literally, I don't want to get hurt as spy. What, the, what are you doing? You're the most riskiest class in the game. You're supposed to get get in the middle of it and try and do something. Not try and not die. You're not going to get better if you don't die. That's what I learned. When yeah, I, first, I know. When I, when I first played spy, I was like, okay, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna die. I'm a, I'm a very squishy little French man, I'm not going to have the chance, to, I'm not a heavy or a soldier, I'm not going to be able to stay alive very long. Well for me, I always measure skill, not in necessarily kill-death ratio, but points over time. You can have somebody that dies a lot, but they've racked up a ton of points and pushed carts and cat points and stuff, and that's what you need to be doing in the game, more than trying to kill the opponent, is win the game. Yeah. Anyway, 
Uh, more back to the point, I'm trying to think of the most overpowered weapon. Mm. And, uh, Can I me. say one more maybe OP weapon? Yeah. The Widowmaker. Oh, <laughs> no. Widow Jesus yeah. Christ. Meat shots, meat shots, meat shots. I'm just going to continue shooting you and never run out of ammu ammunition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I think actually at one point I would have said, you know, the... Um, I'm trying to think, really, I'm trying to think of any weapon I think is just immediately bullshit. Um, I have a friend of mine who would pretty much just say, the sniper rifle. He hates snipers completely. Uh, and I kind of agree with that in a way. Um, I find the problem with uh, sniper rifles is is that their quick scope ability is a little bit too good. Um, the problem is you can just right click, left click if you mouse over them and it feels too much. I think that's what the classic is trying to do and that's completely legitimate with me. Classic should be able to do that, but the other weapon is just like right left click done. And it's just oh headshot and you haven't scoped in yet. I mm. that's kinda where I don't like the sniper rifle. Mm. Yeah, I think I, I myself will just stick with the vaccinator because I think like oh. if you know how to use it, it's just ridiculous. Just the the, the, the the level of tank on that is just absurd. And speaking from experience I, I'm starting to despise it. Like, just I, I want to do damage to people, and it's stopping me from using crits. I mean, that alone is enough to say no, thank you. Please take that away from me. Shaggy, you were saying something, man? Yeah, about the vaccinator. Like, I remember uh, there was a medic pocketing a sniper with the vaccinator, not healing anybody else, and that sniper got like the most kills of anybody and died the least amount of times, just because. Like, a soldier would maybe attack, he just switched to explosive resistance and pop an uber, and you could not kill them. Then a scout would come in, bullet resistance, and you could not kill him. And that was just insanely overpowered. Yeah, I agree with Convy. But they don't have knife resistance. So yeah, fine. thankfully no melee resistance yet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Kind of yes. the razor back. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. Let's, not, let's just hope we don't get melee resistance, otherwise that thing's going to get even worse. I think one of the weapons actually that was a little bit overpowered in its day and it's kind of retracted, retracted a little is the half Zatoichi. Oh, God. Because uh, yeah. that thing crits all the time and it's just, ah, oh, he's got full health now. And also, like we mentioned earlier, combined with the Tide Hunter, uh, not the Tide Hunter, that's a Dota hero. <laughs> yeah, Dota yeah. Tide yeah. Turner. There we go. The Tide Turner. Yeah, that combined with the Tide Turner is just an absurd combo before they nerfed it. Um, I, actually, I, my suggestion, actually, thinking about it, the weapon that irritates me the most and I think does need to be nerfed is, as I said before, Rescue Ranger. It's just mm. so universal. And it gives the, the, uh, the engineer a long-range shot capacity. And that thing's pretty accurate. But it's its ability to basically repair a sentry because regular engineers have to use metal, you see, to fix anything. Not anymore. You've got to reserve four shots to fix your sentry. It means that engineers can go balls to the wall and fix things now. And that's where I think they're a little bit overpowered, especially taking down sentries nowadays. Um, so oh that's man. where I'm saying it's a little bit overpowered. Yeah, that combined with the gunslinger and a mini sentry, that thing's not going down. Like, it just won't. It, it, they can bring it back, they can save it, they can heal it, they can put the uh, shield up on the wrangler, it just won't die. And it's a mini sentry, so it's just painful to deal with. Mm. I mean, part of me wants to say the Spicicle as well, because that's just mainly annoying, but it's not overpowered, though, because as soon as you get caught with a pirate, you're done for, you've lost, you've lost your weapon. Um, thankfully, they a lot of the uh, spy stuff has been nerfed over the years, the Enforcer, um, yeah. the Dead Ringer, you know, so they, they've it's been oh. fairly nerfed that. Uh, what's that weapon, the new pistol that they buffed, that gets crits when you kill somebody? Oh, the Diamondback. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've heard people say that's OP. Yeah, that again. That was what I actually really loved Diamondback. I mean, it was not considered that popular. Uh, it's made it more viable. I feel like it's a lot more viable. Yeah, they got this crit effect on it. Yeah. I mean, I think good career spies will use that a lot. Actually, get quite a few stabs in, and then finish off any ha deal with any problems with the Diamondback. And that's a lovely model gun. I mean, I'm a massive Deus Ex fan. I mean, <laughs> as much as I love TF2. TF2 is my second favourite game compared to Deus Ex. I mean, that's it's the weirdest thing, but, you know. Um, that Diamondback, though, oh, lovely, lovely gun. Mm. But I think we've had to come to a conclusion, though, from the sound of, I do agree with you guys, in the Vaccinator actually is pretty damn powerful in its ability to short burst really quickly. I mean, you can just get straight out, heal somebody up, get to 25% done. You can come out with an Uber Saw as well. One hit equals one Uber. Yeah. yeah, even just a quarter charge is enough to keep you alive. And if you can switch quickly enough, you 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 are just not going to die at all. 
like even with an like the uh, and the enemy team could have like heavies demos pyros kind of like what we had on gold rush and like we just did no damage at all like it was even even with crits popped we just did nothing so. uh, i am actually now attempting to make a video up idea of king game at for four other guys and then basically i'll be a heavy okay one of you each of you guys be a quick a uh, vaccinated medic and have at least all four of the abilities on me and i'll just run around like an asshole not taking any damage and constantly being overhealed uh how does, how does this sound to you lot <laughs> oh my god, that just sounds like a nightmare. Oh. Okay, um, Boar, do you have anything else to add, man? Um, well, there is one <laughs> weapon still that... Ooh. It's not really overpowered in any way, but it's just... Its ability is just a bit exploitable sometimes, which is the Machina. Uh, Machina? Really? Ooh. I mean... The, the, the standard noob sniper weapon, I suppose. Oh. Besides the piss rifle. I, I mean, I okay. love the Mashner, actually. I am one of those guys. For me, extra yeah. damage is always fun, and those uh, multi-kills are always really good. Yeah, but then I've with, always been the, a... Um, with that noise, you know, the burr kind of noise. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> thing is, actually, I know the uh, piss rifle is a very newbie one. It doesn't take headshots. And I love it, because it pisses off uh, other snipers who hate being body-shotted. Uh, so I love it for that reason. And then it, it does the job, actually, if you need to do some quick sniping and just generally annoy people and put on the back foot. It's great for that. The Machina is just simply tons of damage. And if you're a confident knife user, it's great. Because you just whip out a knife and start hitting people with it. Uh, and you Girati as well. Um, and the bush. Oh, man, back in the day, the Bushwhacker, before it got nerfed, now that was overpowered. Oh yeah, it's still it's still it's still an annoying weapon to this day. Like even even when I play spy or like any other class, just just having a sniper. It, I swear they have like a sixth sense. Like I try to go up and sneak up behind them. They just I don't make any noise and they just turn around. Girati, Bushfucker, dead. Like, yeah, they might the have uh, headphones and everything set up. They might have the sound settings a bit funny, which is always quite annoying when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> um. But actually, you know, uh, Bordy was actually mentioned something I think earlier, uh, which was the uh, phlogistonator. Um, the other one I think I'd like to say off that then is uh, what about the backburner? Because the backburner's got a weird legacy of people saying it's a new weapon and it's overpowered at the same time. Um, that's the thing. I find the backburner a really, really good weapon, but you know, ha have to know how to use that. I think people get annoyed with it because it does everything. You know that something you can do, and it has its own built-in crits as well. Mm, I don't see it a whole lot on pubs, actually. Like when I play, most pyros use the degreaser. I don't see the backburner that much. Yeah, I mean the phlogistonator, though. I can see why people get annoyed because it heals you up to maximum health, and it's crit burn everywhere. It also uh. encourages WM1 play as well, which a lot of people hate and despise. You know, no, I, I a lot of people bring emphasis on using. Air blast because they are really useful, but like I personally would not go WM1, but I don't think it deserves as much hate as it gets. I think. No, I mean WM1 is uh, old-fashioned pyro. I mean yeah. back in the day, pyro didn't have an air blast. You had to ambush people and just burn them. Mm. And I'm still that I'm still at legacy with the back burner now. I mean I use air blasts strategically here and there, mm. but I'm not. The problem is I think pyro's been pigeonholed into this very much in this game style of. M2 switch, M2 switch, M2 switch, and sometimes pyros don't really in the close combat fights like they used to anymore, and that's where people get really annoyed. They don't like this pyro being in their face, putting them on fire, and is winning because without using any aim. But mm. for me, that's gameplay sense, not necessarily aiming reflex sense. The reason why people still do it is because it's useful. That, the reason why people still go WM1 sometimes is because it works. It's annoying, but it works. Yeah, I think people don't like it. It's like the whole headshot argument. People only, a lot of people only see skill in the ability to use reflexes. Uh, people don't realise there's a skill in game sense. Uh, you know, good. I mean, as, as a heavy, I think that, you know, actually, game sense is very important to a heavy to know what's going on at any moment. Um, if you can swing around and shoot somebody or shoot the right target, that's game sense, not necessarily reflexes. Yeah, uh, as someone who's a heavy player. Um you know, a lot of people just go, oh, your class is easy. Like, all oh, you no. do is, like, shoot people. It's like, okay, I get, in, in a basic sense, it's very easy. But it's when you start learning that, one, I can jump and move and dodge around. I can, you know, dance around and dodge bullets and be even more hard to kill. I can sneak around and flank people. And if I get up in front of people's faces, they will die. Like, they, there's no chance of them, like, stopping me. So, 
yeah, game sense is really important to like people like Heavy because you need to know which targets to take down, where you're going to flank, where you're going to move, and also make sure that you use your big health to your advantage. Yeah, you can actually win a lot of fires just by tanking like an asshole. And also, don't stand in front of snipers. They, they will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I... I yeah. No, sni- I, 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 as, as a heavy player, just don't even get me started on the snipers. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, well, okay, so... I think overall, I think, in the strangest ways, the most overpowered weapon at the moment um, is the Vaccinates, which I kind of agree with you guys. Um, and I personally also have the Rescue Ranger as well, and it's both, they're both protective measures. It's strange that the more protective measures are coming up recently, and we had said before, you said Dead Ringer. Um, it does seem as if players not being able to get killed is the bane of TF2 at the moment in terms of weaponry. Mm. I mean, pre- previously, I think it was the Sticky Bomb launcher was considered very overpowered. I mean, I still think it is. Uh, I don't know what it is recently. Because it's uh, been de- in decline lately, people haven't used it, so maybe it's just gone to the back a bit. But might, that set might still be lurking, though. Hmm. Um, but anyway, I think we should go on to our last question now, which is actually yours, Bordy Dog. Um, uh, how do you like to see the community grow? Um, did you want to elaborate on your question a little bit? Mm, well, you mean like how... Yeah, what did you want to see happen, or what did you have in mind? Uh, well, I've you like gave me the questions, but I I don't really know an answer myself. So, um, <laughs> what hmm, what could be the thing? Like, there are more and more people are like getting to know you, Ferret, because about and more people want to join the server. Mm. So, and at a certain point, there will be basically too many people for 32 people to join so this is going to be a solution for that yes actually that's um that's something i've kind of had to consider a very occasionally but i've always thought it's a lot more further in the future um the community as is i think is a good size uh we get enough regular players that literally i can just do the phone the effect or snap my fingers turn up in a server and everybody just turns up anyway um you know <laughs> Uh, it's really nice for that to happen, and I can I can just call a server invasion at any time. Um, but it, the community growing as such, it's difficult because I think some of the new players don't join in so easily, and they don't know how to get in so much. Um, and maybe you know all the guys turning up way beforehand is a little bit of a problem because they have a, they come on at a certain time, people can't get in so easily. It might be a little bit of a problem. Uh, having multiple servers might be an idea, but then what do I do with those servers, and how do I commentate on them, and things like that? Uh, uh, hire commentators. <laughs> now that is going to be a weird thing to do. Yeah, that would be very, very, very interesting. You know, I mean, just to get that. The T T F two public ferret sp- uh, commentator group. Um, <laughs> hire numerous people to do commentaries with. Uh, it might work. Uh, you never know. Um, <laughs> But I think the thing is right now, I mean, if it, for the time being, I'd like to see the community grow, you know, double its size. I think I would like to see, um, you know, we when in torn, future torn is after the next one start happening. I'd, lo- I'd love to actually get onto a 16 team uh, tourney because that would be epic. Mm. Uh, it'd be huge and tons of work, but, you know, it'd be really, really fun to see that. Um, yeah, I think mm. the, t- the the tawnies are probably what makes the community grow bigger. Like go, like we mentioned Steel way, way back at the beginning. Uh, and Steel was like a, a big collaboration of teams and people coming together. And like I think uh, Shaggy himself said that he still talks to some of the people that he teamed yeah. up with. And, you know, I feel like the for, because of that, the community got a bit closer. And now, you know, we have a lot of regulars that show up as well, which is nice. And I think the next tawny probably will make the community a bit bigger I feel yeah we get new people on all the time they're trying to join anywhere they can um, I think the biggest problem for the time being is people getting airtime because they come on the scar server they want to join in and they try and come on Wednesdays and Fridays they don't entirely make it in um, it, it's a problem I think the other problem is is I think the one we think we had around about in January uh, Trisoft which was yeah mm. now that is going to be an emergent concern. I came a lot more quickly than I was expecting it to, which is uh, skill ladders and such. It, it's a problem because I, the nature of the program is public. 
and being in public is supposed to be sort of quite informal. If I start putting ladders in place and things like that, it comes a bit more comp, which I'm yeah. not too eager with. But at the same time, then what do you do? Do you have it ha that servers are filled with all these incredibly skilled players, and then basically the newer players are a little bit put off because they've got to go up against these, um, you know, titans as such, and you know they're just not want to get into it. So it would st it would stunt community growth. Well, mm, what I think, at the end of the day, it's still a pub, and let's say, you know, I'm playing Demo Man, and, you know, I do my usual thing, and I remember one time on Turbine, I think, like two or three people, include, including Epic Killer, I think, went short circuit NG, <laughs> and just <laughs> completely denied. I think... I had a similar thing. I think I had a similar thing on Gold Rush, where I think Epic Killer kept uh, 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 putting in chat hashtag Convy Carry every time I kept doing something <laughs> And like, I think on Friday as well, when I, when we played Mountain Lab, I joined the server and he just posted hashtag Convy Carry, and I was like, "This is going to become a thing now, isn't it?" Like, yeah, that's your new name now. Uh, Convy Boon is dead. Convy Carry lives on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the community. Um, it's a very good community. I'm really happy to have you guys. Uh, you've been very supportive. Um, as for it growing, it could, you know, get bigger in size. It would mean I... The bigger it got, though, I would have to put a lot more effort in. I mean, I'd, I'd, what I'd like to get to the point where the, basically the community is so big, it's self-sustaining. Because at the moment, I do scar runs to get new guys in and do other things like that. You know, the public side. Of I do want to get the channel to grow as well. But, you know, at the moment, the channel is now 800 subs. So it's doing well. Mm. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, I hope for by the end of the year it gets to 1k, and then we'll, I'm finally in the four digits club. Um, <laughs> but if the community ever got big enough that it basically attracted people by itself, that'd be great, because then I could just do like four commentaries a week uh, with me or somebody else, and, and somebody else, you know, doing that, and maybe getting a lot more organised with it. Not sure what I'd be doing. Um, maybe I'd have to like segregate groups of people in the certain nights. Uh, that might be one of the solutions actually. Rather than having a ladder system and segregating people by skill, I give certain people time slots they can fit into. But even that's difficult to police because the one thing, the last thing I wanted to start doing is creating whitelists and blacklists. Uh, because it takes way too much admin effort to do that. But I, I want to get, I want people who want to like have the experience though, to at least have some time having some fun hearing me do my thing, which is still amazing to me actually, but people, you know, 800 people actually want to hear me hear me speak on a sermon <laughs> and do shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that might be the future. If it ever gets a, a very large size, it would have it would have to have the server maybe um, get people to do coming on different nights, different bits of community in there, maybe shake it up a little and just hope that people have enough goodwill to stick to their night and not try and bleed into other nights where they feel like it. But overall, I'd like to see community grow, you know, even more friendly. The tourneys boost everybody. I don't, I don't really have to really have a nice time overall. Yeah. But I also, think where, where it is right um, now, oh, sorry about that, uh, where it is right now, I think the community is quite a nice, you know, area, quite a nice uh, sort of kind of just status right now. But it will definitely change and grow, which is very interesting to see. Mm. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think we have reached the end of the questions. Is there anything, any other business or anything else anyone wants to say at the moment? You know, any last questions or thoughts? Um, well, the like the new feature that you're doing, the like top moments of the month or whatever. Oh yeah, nutshells. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. That's <laughs> very funny. Yeah. Oh man, I think I think I think choose. I think um, February's one wasn't so good as the first one. The first one, I think, has definitely some chuckles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I think Twipley's moment on the point was one of my favourite bits. Mm. Uh, and I think I think uh, Stalin Fair was only because Kerouac made that statement, and that it just went from there. I went nuts with that. But <laughs> the nutshells are good. I I'm still doing those every month now, um, and those really are dependent on what you guys do and say. Actually, I mean. Um, it, it does, and I think you know that's actually kind of a testament to the community itself. Actually, um, it really, I, I, I can say stuff. What happens in the match? But it actually, comes down to the sheer quality of the players. And you guys are all really good. You, you're good sports, and you put off some amazing shit sometimes. It's really fun to watch you do that. And that's where most of the that's where most of the fun comes from. Is really you guys actually just 
playing the way you play. I mean, we have like Mountain Lab moments. I mean, actually, this the next video I haven't released it yet, or uploaded yet. But it's called Mountain Lab Moments Two, simply because it's just as bad as the first one. Jesus! <laughs> 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 uh, if you saw the first one, I think it came number two of her uh, the top games of last year. I'm not doing that anymore, simply because now with the nutshells. But s damn, that was an insane match. But yeah, I think. Uh, any anything else, or should I leave it there for today, guys? Yeah, I think good. I think I think that's pretty much good. We've done quite a lot today. Quite. <laughs> yep. No, I can get this video nicely sorted. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you for watching uh, everybody on YouTube, and thank you very much, uh, you guys, for turning up. I, I mean, I've had a fun time talking about all this stuff. Yeah. Um, well, this it's been up. great. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is podcast three, and keep an eye out for podcast four when it turns up. Well. Anyway, guys, I wish you have good luck and good games. <laughs>